I get asked this question often. What is your favorite fish that swims in fresh water? Without hesitation, I reply muskie. Living in Northwest Ontario, I'm in the heart of what muskie anglers across North America dream of. I cut my teeth muskie fishing in Sunset Country on Lake of the Woods, but on this trip, we're headed a few hours to the Northeast to Sioux Lookout, Ontario, in search of a lac Sioux giant. It's been more years than I'd like to admit since I put a 50 inch muskie in the net, and this is one of the best locations around to hopefully change that. Well, we made it. A couple hour drive, just in time for the sunset bite. And maybe we'll just catch 54 inch muskie right away. It's missing a bleed first evening, who knows. I've fished a lot of days for muskies on a lot of different bodies of water. This is where I caught my first 50 inch muskie, was Lac Sewell. So we're coming back, a lot of memories here. Um, we're waiting for Troy, the owner of Winoga. Uh, he's gonna be doing some fishing with us the next couple of days. So very nice, it'll be very helpful to have a guide in the boat showing us where to hopefully find the muskies on this big lake. But anyways, we're gonna get settled into our cabin. It's about six o'clock, so a couple hours of fishing left, if we can get ready in time. When most people come to Winoga, they stay on the island. We're gonna, we'll visit the island yet before this stays done, but their island lodge cabins are absolutely stunning. And beyond that, these guys have so many outposts. I've been only to one of them, moose hunting. I'm sure I'll see some more yet, but we're gonna get unloaded and hopefully Troy. He said he was just finishing up dinner and he's gonna boat across the lake. So anyways, we got Brandon along for the week to help film and we will be meeting with another one of the guides, Greg, who does a lot of the muskie guiding here. So hopefully there's three of us casting big lures in the boat, but we're gonna get unloaded. Home sweet home. Beautiful cabin. I got a loft upstairs, a beautiful bass rug. That's actually pretty sweet. I might take that home with me. Four beds downstairs. Perfect, what more could a guy need? We'll be doing some cooking here. It's gonna be some long days out on the water, I'll tell you that. Hopefully spending as little time as possible in the cabin. Lac Sewell is a pretty intimidating lake, and that's why I thought it was in my best interest to team up with buddies, Winoga Lodge owner Troy Mansfield and guide Greg Attard. Muskies are tough at the best of times, so why not stack the odds with a few musky nuts who are dialed into the water that these fish call home? We're with Greg, Atard, Troy Mansfield, the Winoga Lodge crew. I don't care who catches a muskie, but I want this net getting slimed sometime in the next three days until we catch it. We're not going home until we catch a muskie. I am announcing the first cast at Winoga Lodge, looking for muskies. And you know what you have to do on a trip like this, if you really want to target muskies, is you don't pack bass gear, you don't pack walleye gear, which some people might think is ludicrous being on Laxul. But here we are, three musky guys. What are we fishing here, Troy? Is this uh, like just stumps or is there some weeds in here? Stumps, little sand pocket, turns into a weed bed. Saddle over to that island. My memories of musky fishing Lac Sewell, and I remember when I did research was like fishing a week and maybe seeing one musky, maybe seeing no muskies. I feel like that's changed over the last couple of years. Everybody's gotten better at it, electronics. Oh, there's definitely still grind times on Lac Sewell. Sometimes you can go and see a bunch of fish, catch some fish, but there's also dry times too, or having to anyone. You go a week and not see a fish and. Do you do a big circle or an eight, Greg? Uh, an eight. Yeah. So this is musky fishing, eh guys? Yeah, cast away and pray. Washing lures. Yeah. I, I am ashamed at how little musky fishing I've done in the last couple of years living on Lake of the Woods. And then my first hard musky session is on Lac Sewell. Gotta do it right. Yeah. What percentage of your fish are you hooking in, or seeing in the figures? Hooking in the figure eight, I guess. This year it's been a lot boat side. I find that's always lax sewell though. You, you'll get you'll get that hour where they just bite on the full cast, but then yeah. for the rest of the day it's figure eight, and then it all depends on how good you are at boat side. I'm not that good, so me neither. But I do have a nice weed. There we go. First catch of the trip. Cabbage. So the green stuff. That's the stuff you want. That's the good stuff. This is the good stuff. Yeah. Okay. The green weeds like that, they kind of hold the whole food chain. It's more spread out. That red stuff grows in clumps. You'll find if you have that red stuff in the clumps of the green stuff, yeah. then you're just asking for perfection. That bait right there, you can see. That bait has some stories. Full spot, first spot. All right, first spot. I'm glad we came out. We weren't sure with how late we got here, but it's gonna be a nice night. Muskies are nicknamed the fish of 10,000 casts, and we're hoping for a few less casts than that until we tangle with our first fish. And only having a few days at Winoga, I knew we had our work cut out for us.
I got it all the oh, pike. <laughs> That was exciting. Yeah. First fish of the trip, baby. Yeah. So that's not a muskie, right, Greg? Or can you ID that one for me? It's a pike. <laughs> it's a pike. It's a scary one. It's a tiger muskie. Top water though, right? Yeah. There you go. So that's what you can expect on a trip with uh, yeah, Greg Guitar. You get about 40 of those a day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they get your blood pumping? Yeah. What's that top water called? Honestly, I have no clue. <laughs> I actually don't. <laughs> I bought it and I've been trying to find out what it's called. I asked someone and they think it's from Japan. Let's see, let's see. If someone knows what this lure is called, Greg needs 10 of them in a pink and a yellow color. Prime time. Sun's kissing the trees, kissing Greg's mustache. It's time. Many people equate musky fishing to hunting. And if you're a hunter, you know the importance of sunrise and sunset. I personally would rather fish one hour at sunrise or sunset than six hours midday. And as soon as that sun hits the trees, the lake can come alive. I knew we had a late start to the day, but anytime you're able to fish through that sunset window is definitely a chance for some action. Fish. Oh, it's off. That was a muskie. Ah. Oh. It was, felt big? Yeah, it felt decent. Oh, that happened so fast. I saw his head thrash a couple times. I wouldn't say giant, but it was not a little pike. Oh. Get it out today. Yeah. What'd you say? <laughs> Get it out today. Yeah, exactly. Shoot. It just happens so fast. Well, they put me on him. I was happy with the hook set. It was just two head shakes and off. So far, muskies one, J zero. Good morning from another beautiful day at Winoga. We are headed to the Island Lodge, which I haven't been to in many, many years. Troy's done some work to it. This is where a lot of the guests are staying. He's got these couple cabins on the mainland here. We're boating across. This is called Abram Lake, Tachimitataki Lake. Apparently Greg's cooking his breakfast, so we gotta go. To the island. Troy's the third generation owner and operator of Winoga. His grandpa first acquiring the lodge in 1970. Even just a few years I've known Troy, it's incredible to see what Winoga has become and to hear the stories of what it took to get it there. Their place is truly a gem in the heart of Sunset Country, Ontario. We made it, 45 seconds. I can smell breakfast. This is beautiful. Look at this guy, the special treatment, the Greg special. Me and Jay are friends with Benedict. <laughs> Theo's gonna wrangle a chicken. Hey Theo, how are you? You gonna show me how to wrangle a chicken? Try to block them off. Well, you gotta help me. All right, Theo, Troy's boy's giving us the tour of camp. You, there's a shortcut. Where's the shortcut? Which cabin is this, Theo? Cabin seven. Taking the shoes off, I like it. You've been trained well. No upstairs. No upstairs, no lock. How many beds? Um, six. Six beds. You're a good salesman. Two. Well, thanks to Theo Mansfield for the tour. There's a lot of cabins here. I, I will come back and stay on the island at some point, but Black Soul's the focus and we're on the mainland. So we're gonna head into town, get some gas, and uh, I'm liking this weather. Greg thinks the big one's gonna bite today, or nibble at least.
tackle time with Troy. What do you what do you what are you using, Troy? Uh, I've been throwing blades. This is a big rod. This is a 10 foot rod from Thorn Brothers. That's giant. It is. My longest musky rod, they're, they're, the trend just keeps going with longer, longer rods. When I was getting into musky fishing, you know, an eight foot rod was long, 10 foot rods now. 10 foot rods is gonna be a common thing that's coming up. It really helps for getting the lure away from the side of the boat, helps with figure eights. I'm a taller person, I'm six seven, so it helps with my reach. The baits launch. You can oh, cast you can, so far. You can cast a long ways with a 10 foot rod. Yeah. When you got three guys in the boat, it's nice to nice to use different baits. Blades is such a confidence thing. They have me throwing blades in the front of the boat. I know why, because it's just, it's a staple. Someone should always be throwing blades in the boat, I feel like. Is that something in your boat? Yeah. Always. Always it's blades. Over. Yeah, unless it's <laughs> later in the year. Some plastics, a top water. Laxul is this this thing about top waters and big muskies. I mean, that's anywhere, but specifically Laxul. I think some of the legends and some of the biggest muskies are eating top water, so. Uh, other than that, basically, I mean, I'm using a 400 size. This is a Tranx. They're using the big Daiwas. It's a 180 pound fluorocarbon leader. And it's a short leader, which makes it nice for figure eighting. Long leaders for trolling, short leaders for casting, pretty staple. And then a uh, hundred pound braid. Stout gear when you're fishing for these fish. Having the proper release tools, a big net, all that stuff for the care of the fish, right? Make sure these fish are caught and released because there isn't unlimited muskies. There are a lot though. We're gonna catch one today. All right, here we go. Spot number one. What do we got here, Troy? Weeds, rocks, sand, weeds, current. Ooh. Everything you want. Keep talking. Everything you need. It all looks good, but not all of it's good. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one thing you learn about fishing larks, so a lot of it looks good. But it ain't. You need to pick it apart to find key spots. Yeah. A spot on the spot, you might say. Pretty much from opener until August, weeds is the focus up here. Yeah. And then you can start getting them on rocks. Yeah. After like that first cooling trend. And for someone that doesn't know how to find weeds, because obviously weeds you don't see on a map, what's your process on finding weeds? Yeah, I don't know. Grassy shorelines just always have sand and the cabbage grows on the sand. Sand is key. If you see sand coming off an island, there's probably weeds on there. Yep. Are guests pretty particular about which cabin they get? Like, would some be like, only want to stay in the new cabin or people are... Yeah. Yeah, but then you get large... Yep. There's a fish, there's a musky that, on there. That. Oh, that's big. See him mouth it? He's still there. Yep. Oh yeah. Is that a pike? I think it's that's a pike. That's a musky. It is a musky? Yep. Good sign. Well, keep fishing, I guess. I think that is one of the cool things about musky fishing is going back on a fish. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that's where it turns from fishing into the kind of hunting. Ooh, this is the perfect storm right here. Yeah. Might not be nice to fish in, but man, some of the craziest feeding windows I've seen is when it's hailing and nasty and fish just start coming out of everywhere. Another day, another chance at a 50 inch musky. Such a key component to musky fishing is staying focused and keeping a positive mindset. I've had some of my worst musky days followed up by my best musky days, and the fish eventually need to eat. It's just a matter of logging hours and hoping you put your lure in the right place at the right time. No. There we go. Oh, that's a nice follow. Oh. He'll come back. Keep going, Jay. I thought she was going to bite there. You got him. Oh, it's a little musky. Come on. Yeah, there's a little musky. Oh no. <laughs> well, we'll count that as a caught musky. Oh, pipe. Look at that man manhandle that pike. 10 foot rod. That's all right. What are we calling it? 35 inches? Probably, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Oh, there's one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, she likes it. She was into it, dude. Yeah, she was. Fish, big one. Yep, 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 yep. Gosh. That was bigger than the last one. He's right on me. Here we go. Same one? Bigger one. Look at her just mouthing I it. I saw that. You see how she just goes? Yeah. Keep moving. Some good encounters there by Greg. Can't see it. Oh, did we lose any rods? Just the net? Wow, good job, Jay. Well, we're at our next spot, as you saw from the GoPro Talon cam. The net went flying out of the boat. I saw it, I was watching it, and I'm like, no, it's not gonna go. No, it's not gonna go. Sure enough, into the water. Greg did a great job gripping around. Anyways, we we're on a new spot. When you were young, was musky fishing a thing or not really? I mean, early 90s, there's kind of a wave of them, but then it kind of just got quiet for a while up here. Yeah. I think it's always been a destination for certain class of anglers. Yeah. 
Definitely the definitely for the adventurous types back then. Yeah. I still feel like it's adventurous. Like what's more adventurous than lax for muskies? Yeah. What you got? What you got? Might be a muskie. Where do you want me? Right here. I'm taking it right to you. Oh, we got her. Woo -hoo -hoo. sauce. Hey, we got one. Almost jumped out of the net. We got a muskie. <laughs> I'm on the board, boy. This fish is actually 70 inches long. <laughs> yeah. Troy's just when you're 6'7", you make fish look small. Winoga special right there. Sweet. Good job, buddy. Yeah, thank you. 40 incher? Probably. Clean, healthy. Nice colors. It's Yeah, it's dark. <laughs> if it was a little bit brighter, you'd see the colors shining. Good job, Troy. Yeah. We knew you could do it. Just had to put you in the front of the boat. <laughs> Goodbye, baby. Good job. Good yeah. job, buddy. Good job, boys. Sweet. Well, we stuck it out. We waited the rain out anyways. Yeah, we waited the rain out and Troy made it happen. On this day, we had planned to burn some gas. With a milk run putting over 100 miles on the boat, our sights were still focused on connecting with the Laxul Giant. Well, we're back out the crack of uh, the crack of 11:30. Still be a 12-hour day. You can still do, yeah. That was a full shift yesterday. Today will be a full shift. Laxul is approximately 150 miles wide, has 3,000 miles of shoreline, and covers over 560 square miles. It is the seventh biggest lake in Ontario, and I was very happy to let Greg and Troy drive my boat. Not only do they know where the fish are, but they also know where the rocks and stumps are. I'm feeling good. Good vibes. Yeah. It looks like you can see cabbage tops like 100 feet away. Would that make sense? Yep. It's a cool kind of bucktail musky munchies, but these blades, it's a fixed blade, so you don't have to worry about blades not spinning, which is nice because sometimes you end up wasting a cast when the blades get tangled. The thing is, he's have so much vibration, and when a muskie bites it, he's just getting hooks. That's the beauty of it. With a lot of other baits, they can hit it sideways or they'll, you know, you'll pause the bait and then they have a chance to hit it on the head. But with bucktails, they're eating it from behind most of the time and they're just getting, getting a hook. Well, my hope is I just catch the 54 and then I get demoted to the back of the boat and then it's your turn, Greg. Sweet. Black Sewell's though, hard to get people to come here for musky fishing. I don't know, you don't get the masses. Just cause the stories of you fish all week for a couple bites. Probably. And just not good mapping. Yeah, and that's what intrigues me, is that there's less people fishing out here, there's more unknown, there's musky spots that maybe haven't been fished. Some other lakes you go to, you might be lining up to fish a musky spot here. It's like, we haven't seen a musky boat, and we might not see a musky boat the entire time. Bomb and casts. It's nice having three musk anglers in the boat, you just cover a lot of water. I'm getting treated like royalty right now. Not having to worry about running the trolling water pedal. They're gifting me the front of the boat. Just felt it and... Yeah, just 10 feet away from the side. I just cast it literally over where the action happened, like where I figured he came from. Yeah. Oh, oh, there's a the follow. Fish. Darted off, eh? Yeah, I saw a fish. You might come back, check your life scope. He darted pretty fast. Yeah. But, well, I, I wouldn't say for sure musky, but probably musky. It was... Here, yeah, you saw a good looking yeah, tail. Yeah, I seen the tail. I just saw a kick and gone. 45, but... 40, not huge. Good sign. Yep. The thing about musky fishing is the moment you're not ready, it's the moment the musky eats your bait. Unless you see them on live scope and you're prepared. Oh, there's a musky, Troy. Look at it right there. Yeah, Must there have is. followed you in late, eh? Way late. There he is. Oh, he's coming, see he's him? coming, he's coming. Oh, he's gonna eat. Oh, oh he you left off. me. He'll come back. He'll come back. Oh, there he is. Oh, he came back. He was way late. And then he was hot. I thought he was going to eat it there on that one turn. He was getting into it at least. Yeah. I, I, I did the turn and pulled out and then he just appeared like... Should have did three turns. He seemed catchable. He did. Well, we can come back to that fish later. Yep. How big do you think that was, Troy? Probably mid-40s. Mid-40s, yeah. And why didn't you catch him? I wasn't ready. <laughs> he came in late and he came in slow and then, then he turned on and yeah, we just kind of separated.
Oh, there's some toilet paper used for kindling. Yeah, so Jay, if you just want to cook for us and we'll just wait here. I'm fine with that. This brings me back to my guiding days. Most people do a shore lunch while we're doing it. We got sausage. We got farmer sausage on the menu today. I was, I was raised on this stuff. A lot of meat, just a pan of meat. Ooh. It is hot, so hot. Fine dining, happen to have some bread along. It's so good. That was good. Good job. A little pit stop. Got some protein. Yep. All right, we'll see you later, Greg. Yep. Bye, Greg. <sighs> We have covered some miles today and we're kind of focusing on A spots, not the B spots, not the C spots. Anyways, we're back to where we saw one before, so. Who knows? Can always happen again. This is it? Where was the follow? Kind of off the... Pretty much right off that... Nugget? Yeah, that bar that comes out. There's one. Nice. That's a muskie. You got her, Jake? Yeah. Oh. I'm gonna come back this way. Okay. Where do you want me? Right here? Right yeah. here, right there, yeah. Jake. Woo! Woo! <laughs> that's a good one. Awesome. Good job, buddy. Wow, oh, that's the one, I think. Yeah, that's her. That is a thick fish. <laughs> Slackline me. Amazing. Yeah, boy. Woo! Relax. And you'll see how thick laxal muskies are. They're built a little bit different. Let's see a give a look at that fish first. Ooh, ooh. Sweet. What do we got? Oh, that's a nice oh. one. 45 and a half. Awesome. Sweet. That's a good start. All right. We should put him back. Okay. He's ready. Good job, buddy. That was great. That awesome. was awesome. That's what we're waiting for, and that's the mood. Because that, that the cool thing about muskies, you can come back on them when you see them, and this is the one that followed before. And Greg got it done. That fish just. It brought the, not that the morale was not down, the morale was great, but it did give us a good boost. You can just feel the energy in the boat. There's really a nice color in those clouds, eh, Brandon? Just be pretty epic backed up with a musty. So get one. <laughs> just get one. Just nibble already. Those rocks bite real hard Oh sometimes. yeah, it's shallow. 60, 50, 60 feet out, we're in two feet of water. It gets, we're, you're casting on shallow stuff there. Fish, fish. You get a Greg. Where do you want it? Uh, I don't know, yeah, left right side, here. Left side. Oh, Jay, that's a good one. Okay, she's coming up here. Oh, I can't get her. Oh. You're good. Oh, that was so good. You're good. Where is she? She's down. I'm gonna try to back up and just lift. Oh, there she is. All right. Oh, just be careful. Right there. Yeah, oh, boy! Oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh! We're just saying how nice would it be 
to get a musky in front of that sunset. Oh, baby. She's big. It, it has been a minute since I've caught a musky. Woo -hoo -hoo. Wow. That was a good fight, musky munchie. That one's halfway out. Oh man, that's a big fish. Winoga Lodge. Wow. Boys, that's, that's, awesome. that's why I came here. Yeah. That is why we cast it and cast it and cast it. I was already very happy with Greg's fish, but. 48 and a half. 48 and a half. Four foot musky, boys. Wow. We're growing up. Wow. You fish all day and then in the last couple hours, it just comes alive. There she goes. Oh, boys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was a big fish. That was good. That was so good. And that right there is why we do it. Hours of mindless casting for a few moments of chaos. While I didn't crack the 50 inch mark this time, it's just a reason to come back and fish with Troy and Greg again for some Sunset Country muskies. Thanks again to them for the amazing hospitality and for putting me on the fish of 10,000 casts.